A pleasant morning to everyone. This is Mr. Henry Lopez, the proponent of the research entitled Enhancing Shielded Metal Arc Welding or SMAW, Vocabulary of Grade 11 TBL Students through Crossword Puzzles, Basis for Enrichment Activity Plans. For the research abstract, the purpose of this study is to assess the vocabulary development of grade 11 students from Senior High School Department of Tabangao Integrated School under Shielded Metal Arc Welding Track in order to create enrichment activities for them. The respondents of the study are comprised of 30 students which were purposely chosen as the subjects of the study. Thus, no sampling method was used. This study utilized research-made tests and crossword puzzles in order to gather data which would be used as baseline of the study. For the introduction and rational, vocabulary or word meaning is one of the keys to comprehension. Students with poor vocabulary may also find it difficult to comprehend the content of the material made available to them. As a classroom teacher handling shielded metal arc welding, the researcher observes students' difficulty in reading comprehension, especially in following steps and procedure because of their vocabulary problem. As a facilitator during examination, the researcher also observes that students are just answering the items without even reading the long selections provided to them. This situation is more pronounced in subjects with long selections and requires arduous time to read. The researcher also observed that students lack courage and confidence in joining class discussions. They are hesitant about the words to be used in expressing their ideas, feelings, and emotions. Let us now proceed to the research questions of the study. Specifically, it seeks to answer the following questions. 1. What are the distinct features of crossword puzzles as technique to increase small vocabulary of grade 11 students? How may the crossword puzzle be applied as part of learning activities in the following lessons? First, hand tools. Second, welding defects. And third, mensuration and calculation. What is the performance of grade 11 students in small vocabulary tests after the implementation of crossword puzzles? Fourth, Based on the results, what enhanced learning activities may be prepared to enhance small vocabulary? We have now the methodology of the study. Research design. The study used descriptive research design. For this purpose, the study used data gathering instruments which was administered to the respondents. The data were collected and analyzed descriptively. Subjects of the study. The respondents of the study were 40 grade 11 students from Senior High School Department of Tabangao Integrated School under Shielded Metal Arc Welding Trap. They were purposely chosen as the respondents of the study. Thus, no sampling method was used. The study will delimit the other sections of grade 11 since they have different strands of specializations. Let us now proceed to the data gathering instrument. This study made use of research-made tests consisting of 30 items concerning some of the topics in shielded metal arc welding. This was utilized as pre-test and post-test in order to determine any development in students' vocabulary after the crossword puzzle has been integrated in the discussions. And that is all about my research presentation. Once again, this is Mr. Henry A. Lopez. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon. We present to you our action research entitled Educational Approach in Handling Indigenous People in Wawa Elementary School. We are the researchers from Wawa Elementary School, SDO, Batanga City. The researchers who became IP ed teachers believed that education is for all. Everyone has the right to proper and formal education. The Samaba Joe pupils in Wawa Elementary School are only few of hundreds of residents who want to be in a better education. Culturally responsive education and enhancement of learning must be provided for them. Thus, the researchers opted to pursue this study. Specifically, the study sought to answer the following questions.
to serve the purpose of the study and to determine the description of indigenous people and the problems met by the respondents, the researchers employed descriptive method of research. The respondents of the study were the 38 teachers in Wawa Elementary School for school year 2021-2022. And to determine the data necessary for this study, a self-made questionnaire was utilized as the data gathering instrument. Weighted mean and ranking were used to quantify and measure the data gathered in the conducted study. Here are the results and discussions of the study. IPs are struggling to fight for their rights and the land their ancestors have lived in. This implied that IPs are being deprived of their territorial, economic, and political autonomy while their customary beliefs and values begin to weaken. They are also among the poorest and the most disadvantaged social group in the country. With a weighted mean of 3.33, it clearly shows that IP have a set of specific rights based on their historical ties to a particular territory. Problems met by teachers in teaching indigenous people in terms of language barrier. With the highest mean of 3.43, teachers don't have trainings in learning Sinama, the language of Sama Bajau. The researchers found out that in order to communicate with the pupils, it is needed to understand their language. Problems in terms of economic status. Most of the respondents agreed that most of the IPs still heavily rely on the sea. The researchers found out that even though they live in an upland or remote areas, they will continue to have a connection in the sea, which is their primary source of living. Problems in terms of family orientation. Indigenous people have their own political government, which gained the highest weighted mean of 3.50. It reveals that some of the Jiao do not conform to the rules of the state because of exercising their right as indigenous people. Problems in terms of health. Suffering in malnutrition has the highest interpretation with a weighted mean of 3.53. This shows that IPs may suffer from malnutrition because of not eating meal before going to school and it results to habitual absences and to the low participation in school activities. The proposed intervention contains activities for the teachers and indigenous people to be involved in the teaching learning process. Creating short stories that will be translated in their own dialect will make a big difference in delivering lessons. Researchers ask the help of the respondents in making short stories that will be translated in the vernaculars of Samabajau. The researchers conducted a learning action cell for teachers who are handling indigenous pupils to learn some Sinama words through the help of IP ed teachers who are capable in teaching the language. The support of SBFP is provided to all Sama Bajau learners so that in a small way of lending a hand, each family can survive. This program greatly helps to mitigate the habitual absences of pupils. The strong tie-up of LGU, DSWD, and DepEd may continue to help them by giving opportunities to their parents in attending seminar about dressmaking, Handle making and giving some food bags and cash assistance. This form of help will sustain their living even in these pandemic times. From the findings of the study, the following conclusions are drawn. From the findings and conclusions of the study, the following recommendations are offered. Good day everyone, here's an action research entitled ECCD Pre-Assessment Result Basis for Self-Made Intervention Materials for Kindergarten Learners with Significant Delay. Proponent, Marian Di Makatangay of Batanga City South Elementary School. Following are the content of this action research. 
introduction, methodology, result and discussion, conclusion, and recommendation. The kindergarten setup uses Philippine Early Childhood Development Checklist or PhilECD as a tool of assessment for 3 to 5 year old Filipino children. This is in accordance with DepEd Memorandum DMCI 2020 00080, which states that schools shall continue to use the ECD assessment checklist as the main tool for monitoring developmental milestone among kindergarten learners. This serves as a basis for planning and implementing interventions to address risks of developmental delays and boost growth and development among kindergarten learners. Methodology The source of data and information of this study is the result of ECCD pre-assessment for school year 2021-2022. To achieve its purpose, the researcher employed a descriptive method of research. To analyze and interpret the data gathered, the researcher employed frequency, ranking, and percentage. Results and Discussion Table 1 reflects the ECD pre-assessment result during the school year 2021-2022. As tabulated, there were a total enrollment of 58 males and out of 58 12 or 20.69% are learners who manifest significant delay in overall development. Meanwhile, among 87 females who took the assessment, 16 or 18.39% described with significant delay in overall development. The result of the administration of ECCD pre-assessment for school year 2021-2022 at Batanga City South Elementary School showed that some learners had the interpretation of suggest significant delay in overall development. This means that those learners need further interventions to address the suggested delay by the tool. This became the basis for the researcher to look into the ECCD pre-assessment result. Furthermore, to look into which domain the kindergarten learners showed significant delay which will be the basis in creating self-made intervention materials. Table 2 convey the summary of ECCD pre-assessment result for each domain. Out of 145 takers, the table explains that among the 7 domain learners showed significant delay in cognitive domain with 83, seemed to be the most difficult for the learners and fine motor skill came to be one practiced by the learners. Moreover, among the 145 takers, no one falls under highly advanced and slightly advanced learners. Table 3 showcases the post-assessment result of ECCD among kindergarten learners, school year 2021-2022. Looking into the data, during the post-assessment, no one gets significant delay in overall development, thus redirecting the bottom line into the effective implementation of the teacher-made intervention to help kindergarten learners improve their performance throughout the school year. Project KIND helps aid the learner to overcome problems in the seven domains of development for kindergarten. Table 4 indicates the post-ECCD assessment result in each domain. The significant improvement of kindergarten performance all throughout the school year has been traced back on the impact of the teacher-made intervention materials to help learners learn the skills based on the ECCD tool. Teacher-made intervention includes activities for the seven domains, games, singing, art-inspired tasks, and basic language familiarization activities are some of the teacher-made interventions that equip learners with knowledge and how to develop skills appropriate to their age. Conclusion Early childhood assessment is an effective tool used to gather and provide teachers, parents, and families with critical information about child's development and growth. Kindergarten learners need to be given intervention in cognitive, self-help, social-emotional, and expressive language domains based on the pre-assessment result wherein learners experience significant delay. Project KIND serves as the intervention strategy of kindergarten teachers to improve the performance of learners who show significant delay in one or more ECCD domain. Recommendations Kindergarten readiness includes motor skills like holding a pencil and using scissors. Self-care like getting dressed and not needing help in the bathroom are important.
everyone should be ready to respond safely and efficiently to crises, including natural disasters when they occur at a school. Emergencies can happen at any moment. Good day. I am Nino Aram Dilay from SDO Batanga City. My research title is about Disaster Preparedness Practices Utilized by School Disaster Risk Reduction and Management or SDRM Coordinators of Elementary Schools of District 3. Disasters and natural calamities are among nature's way of reminding the population of an area to be ever vigilant and aware of the importance of the environment, as well as to be conscious of the conservation efforts that would help in preserving the balance of nature, as stated by UNESCO. The Philippines is one of the countries with the highest climate-related disaster risk in the world. Natural disasters are a serious threat to the Philippines. And according to the International Bank for Reconstruction Development 2014, the Philippines rang third out of 173 countries with high disaster risk. The southern point of Luzon Island is where Batangas City located, with the Batangas Bay serving as one of its main water borders. It is known as one of the nation's most industrialized yet environmentally sound localities. There are many coasts in the area and the mountains help to create a type of resistant natural barrier. The city experienced its fair share of disasters. However, they were not as severe as those that affected other cities and municipalities. An initiative of the Department of Education to introduce emergency preparedness practices into their respective schools. Disaster preparedness can reduce the impact of disasters on education, teachers, and most importantly, students. The role of the School Disaster Risk and Reduction Management Coordinators is to identify, assess, and manage other risks and hazards in the area, educate others about these hazards and risks, including their nature, consequences, early warning signs, precautions, identify and apply affordable risk mitigation techniques or methods. This study aimed to determine the level of disaster preparedness practices utilized by school disaster risk reduction and management coordinators of elementary schools of District 3. Specifically, the study sought to answer the following questions. 1. What are disaster preparedness practices utilized by the SDRRM coordinators? 2. To what extent do the respondent utilize different practices in conducting activities on disaster preparedness relative to earthquake, fire, and typhoon? And number 3. Based on the analysis, what action plan may be prepared to strengthen disaster preparedness? Results and Discussion Based on the assessment of the respondents in the elementary school in District 3, the table presents the results of disaster preparedness practices utilized by SDRRM coordinators, forming a disaster management committee that oversees the preparation for and reduction of disaster risk obtained the highest weighted mean of 4.00 among the six statements provided by the researchers. It can be deemed that this statement is considered strongly evident among all the teacher respondents. As emphasized in the research of the Federal Emergency Management Agency of the United States, schools might be the best setting for disseminating risk-based educational programs. Table 2 shows the result of the responses of the teachers in practice on conducting activities on disaster preparedness relative to earthquakes. It can be gleaned that the one item organized earthquake evacuation drills at least twice a year received the highest weighted mean of 4.00, which is verbally interpreted as strongly evident. As presented above, the given statements are practices for conducting activities on disaster preparedness relative to fire. This table shows that there is sound warning system in place for fires that will cause all building alarms to go off is strongly evident among the respondents. Table 4 shows the practices of conducting activities on disaster preparedness relative to a typhoon in elementary schools in District 3. It may be gleaned from the table that SDRM coordinators closely monitored weather in the event of typhoons and strongly rainfall which was obtained with a weighted mean of 4.00 and ranked first among the four statements. Presenting the action plan to strengthen disaster preparedness. And here are my conclusion. and recommendation. Once again, I am Nino Eram B. Dilay from SDO Batanga City. Good day! 
Bless day everyone. I do, we do, you do as an intervention in developing early literacy of kindergarten was a collaborative study of Eunice F. Marasigan and Irene R. Duño, kindergarten teachers of Bagunsilang Elementary School, SDO Batanga City. This action research focused on the use of the I do, we do, you do strategy in enhancing kindergarten pupils' literacy competency. In this research, the literacy level of kindergarten pupils was de- determined before the implementation of the strategy. Reading is the process of deriving meaning from written material. Words and sounds are explicitly taught in early reading lessons. For the goal of comprehension, children must be able to differentiate between various oral language sounds. Additionally, they must have a fundamental understanding of the written alphabet, sound symbol, correspondences, and print concept since these are the building blocks of decoding and comprehension skills. This research saw answers to the following questions. Number one, what is the literacy level of kindergarten pupils of Bagunsilang Elementary School before and after the implementation of the intervention? Number two, is there a significant difference in the literacy level of kindergarten pupils of Bagunsilang Elementary School before and after the implementation of the intervention? Number three, what were the challenges encountered during the implementation of the intervention? The participants of this study were 42 kindergarten learners of Bagusilang Elementary School who participated in the limited face-to-face during the school year 2021-2022. In gathering the needed data, a pretest on alphabet knowledge was first conducted to assess the literacy level of the kindergarten pupils. The main focus of the assessment was identifying, sounding out, and writing the letters. After the initial assessment was done, the researchers then proceed to the implementation of the strategy for several weeks. Then, posters were asmi- administered to determine in the use of intervention would have an impact on the performance of the pupils. The data gathered was then statistically treated and analyzed. Table 1.1 presents the level of literacy of the learners. The result of the pretest given revealed that majority of the pupils were at below average performance as indicated by the general average of 11.05 which is at 41%. This indicates that many kindergarten pupils had difficulty in terms of identifying the letters of the alphabet. Meanwhile, it was also found that there were three pupils who attained average performance in literacy with percentage scores ranging from 51 to 54. These pupils exhibited average performance as well in terms of identifying, sounding out, and writing the letters. Table 1.2 presents the performance level of pupils after the implementation of the intervention. From the above result, it could be gleaned that the kindergarten pupils attain an overall rating of 71% in terms of their literacy level which is above average. In addition, there were 25 pupils who obtained the above average performance in literacy. Moreover, there were 14 learners who obtained an average performance in literacy. These pupils were able to perform independently the activities in line with sounding out, identifying, and writing the letters. Table 2 presents the result of the statistical treatment conducted to determine the difference between the two scores. Based on the computed t-value of negative 10.37,346, there was a significant difference in terms of the scores of the pupils in their level of performance in literacy before and after the implementation of the intervention. The researcher identified the following challenges encountered in the implementation of the intervention. Number one, there is a need to allocate a sufficient amount of time so as to fully gain the full benefits of the intervention. Number two, cooperation among the learners must always be consistently incited in order for the learners to fully improve their skills. Number three, some learners were quite hesitant to participate in the task. Number four, materials for the intervention sometimes are unavailable. And number five, some learners found the other materials quite unexciting. With reference to the findings of the study, the following conclusions were found. Number one, the literacy level of kindergarten pupils was below average before the implementation of the intervention, yet it was on above average level after the intervention was implemented. 
Number two, there is a significant difference in terms of the literacy level of kindergarten pupils before and after the implementation of the intervention. And number three, some challenges like the allocation of time and sustaining motivation among the pupils are the challenges encountered by the researcher in the utilization of the intervention. Based on the research conclusion, the following are recommended. Number one, the use of the I do, we do, you do could be utilized by other teachers so as to improve the literacy level of kindergarten pupils. Number two, the strategy might be used to other grade levels. And number three, the teachers might allocate sufficient time for the intervention so as to fully observe its effectiveness. The result of the action plan can be disseminated to all elementary teachers within the district. Good day. I am Christina C. Gutierrez from Tuloto Elementary School, proudly presenting to you our study entitled Teachers Research Engagement at Tuloto Elementary School Basis for a School Research Development Plan. Education is an essential component of every society and educational research must be prioritized in order to broaden the boundaries of knowledge. In many ways, it contributes to the general development of pedagogy, learning programs, and policy design, as well as improved knowledge of learning and teaching. In the Philippines, the Basic Education Governance Act of 2001 emphasized the importance of research in the basic education systems management and administration. The EPED has worked to strengthen research in the department as a result of this responsibility. Various research projects under the Basic Education System Reform Agenda or BESRA and the creation of research, innovation, and policy evaluation secretariat in 2003 are examples of such endeavors. Building on these advances, the department established the Policy Research and Development Division as a framework to promote and manage the vertical and horizontal conduct of education research under the rationalization plan. Many advance the idea that educational research should be integrated with the work of teachers in school in the form of the teacher as researcher. However, conducting research may be limited since only a few teachers have tried to do it. Although educational institutions have encouraged their teachers to be involved in research as it seemed to be useful for their professional development and in their teaching career, teachers are confronted with many issues that affect their motivation to undertake research. This study aimed to determine the research engagement of teachers at Tuloto Elementary School it also sought to determine the factors that influence the research engagement and to ascertain the significant relationship between the profile variables and teacher research engagement. Descriptive type of research using the quantitative method was employed. A survey questionnaire was also utilized to gather sufficient data that would answer the purpose of the study. All teachers of the school were included in the study. The statistical tools used in treating data were frequency, percentage, weighted mean, and Pearson test. The findings revealed that out of eight teachers, four were in the age bracket of 46 to 55 years old, three were master graduates, Three were in the service for 31 to 35 years, and six of them had two to four training related to research. Teachers are often engaged in physical engagement, while sometimes engaged in cognitive and emotional engagement in research. It is also revealed that acknowledgement from leaders and colleagues ranked first among the factors that influence teachers' engagement in research. Moreover, there is no significant relationship between the profile of the respondents and the cognitive and emotional engagement in research. Age, on the other hand, was found to have a significant relationship with physical engagement in research. A school research development plan was proposed to increase the research engagement at Tuloto Elementary School. Here are the recommendations from the study. First, 
the Department of Education may offer more interesting rewards and incentives in order to encourage teachers to conduct research. Second, teachers may undergo training and retooling in order to deepen and develop their research engagement and increase research productivity. Third, higher authorities should allocate funds for research projects by forming partnerships with stakeholders. And lastly, other studies along with teachers' research engagement should be conducted in the future to support earlier, earlier findings. So here are the references used in the study. And that's all. Thank you for listening. Good day, everyone. This research is entitled Work-Life Balance and Stress Management Practices of School Heads and Teachers, Bases in the Development of District Health and Wellness Program. The proponent is Dr. Leia C. Aquino, Public Schools District Supervisor of Batanga City District 2. With the 10 component schools, the district is known for its name, Familia. Everyone considers himself belonging to a family where members are beautiful inside and out, where saving is felt and caring for each other abounds. A health and wellness program in an institution is vital for the employee's welfare and professional development. Lack of wellness programs can affect the lives of the teachers. Teachers, school heads, non-teaching personnel, and even the deputy officials experience being stressed with the bulk of tasks required of them especially these days that we are on the process of learning recovery. Our health, spirit, and even our body must always be ready. Yet, there are times our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. The primary purpose of this research is to assess the work-life balance and stress management practices of the school heads and teachers in Batanga City District 2. Results and findings will be used for developing district health and wellness program. Here are the research questions. 202 out of 242, or 84%, teaching and non-teaching personnel served as the subjects of the study. Questionnaire is the main instrument used in gathering the data. Results revealed that majority of the school personnel in District 2 belonged to the age of 36 to 40 years old. Female, married, with T3 position and most of them have rendered less than 10 years in depth ed. Teachers and school heads' work-life balance was assessed and data revealed that they are confident that their mental health is optimistic and well-balanced. Teachers also enjoy learning new things while at work, are willing to learn new skills, as evident by accepting increased responsibilities and dealing easily with learners, parents, colleagues, and superiors while working. For the assessment of stress management practices, data shows that the District 2 personnel stay positive as much as they can. They can deal with the emotions and feelings of clients, and they know how to make right decision in a stressful situation at work. They are guided by leaders who have been constantly reminding them to stay positive and letting them feel they are loved and that they belong to one family. When asked about the stress-leaving activities, the respondents, among the top 10 activities are team building, going to salon, massage parlor, and in other places where they can distress, improve their mental health, and forget issues they may be having in the classroom. Traveling is also one of the best choices by many. Also swimming, holding gawad tagumpay, eating together, strolling by the seashore, reading a book or any relaxing magazine, chatting with trusted friends and watching comedy and other relaxing movies. For the conclusion, teachers need the stress-relieving activities reflected in a health and wellness program developed to enhance mental and emotional health to stay optimistic and well-balanced. The proposed health and wellness program is recommended to be reviewed, tried out, and utilized for effective implementation. And last but not the least, here is the output of the research. The District Health and Wellness Program First part, starting a health and wellness program. And second part, 
district annual wellness events. And here are the references. Some of the activities mentioned were already started. Team building, wellness exercises, and some related activities have been initiated after the conduct of these research. It is hoped that the output will serve its purpose. Thank you. This is Dr. Leia C. Aquino of Batanga City, District 2. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to present our collaborative study entitled Proposed Instructional Adaptation Plan in District 6, Division of Batanga City. The researchers are yours truly, Mr. Mark Clancelis, Dr. Adeline Briones, and Dr. Teresita Kulia. With the economic downfall and the introduction of new learning modalities, the aim to provide quality and accessible education among Filipino learners was greatly challenged. Instructional adaptations should be made particularly in dealing with inclusive learners. In the pre-survey conducted among elementary schools in District 6 that served as the basis of this study, results show that 60% of the respondents agree that they do not have enough knowledge in teaching inclusive learners. In addition, the results of the survey signifies that there are no doubts whether normal learners and inclusive learners get the same quality education in the new normal setup. Given the scenario and based on the suggestions of teachers who are and have been engaged in teaching inclusive learners as seen on the last part of the pre-survey results, the researchers decided to collaboratively come up with the realization of the present study. This study aimed at serving these purposes. First, assess the implementation status of inclusive education in District 6 specifically in the new normal education setup. Second, identify the challenges, barriers, and reasons in the implementation of inclusive education in distance learning. And lastly, propose an instructional adaptation plan to strengthen the implementation of inclusive education in District 6. For the research questions, the first one aims to describe the respondents with reference to age, school, and years of service. The second one deals with the description of the implementation status of inclusive education in the district in terms of preparedness and curriculum. The third question deals with the root cause of challenges and barriers met by teachers in the implementation of inclusive education, while the fourth one tries to identify the appearing reason as to why the challenges exist. And finally, the fifth one deals with the solution proposed by the researchers. The researchers utilize descriptive research design in the conduct of the study through quantitative research method. The data gathering tool was a self-made questionnaire which was sent through Google Forms to the 90 elementary teachers in the district who were purposefully chosen based on their records of handling inclusive learners. Some ethical issues were considered and data were treated with the right statistical tools. Let us now proceed to the results and discussions. On your screen are the distribution of respondents according to age and years of service. Most teachers handling inclusive learners in District 6 are on the age bracket of 31 to 35 years old with 1 to 5 years of service. This means that teachers who handle inclusive learners in the district are neophyte needs further training. Table 1.3 shows the distribution of respondents according to schools. Having the representation of each school, particularly the bigger ones, it clearly shows that each school has inclusive learners. This further proves that intensified instructional adaptation should be made to ensure equal education or learning opportunities to the inclusive learners. Proceeding now to the second part, the implementation status on inclusive education. Elementary schools in District 6 are prepared in the implementation of inclusive education when it comes to professional development programs and activities. It complies with the provisions of Def Ed Order No. 19 S2021, which defines inclusive education as one of the core principles of the K-12 basic education program. Moving on, the results show that elementary schools in District 6 are doing curriculum adjustments and advocacy suited to the needs of the inclusive learners. This means that inclusive learners are given the opportunity to learn at their own pace and ability. There are available curriculum resources which are not quality assured and in the local pace. Table 3.1 presents the challenges met by elementary school teachers in the implementation of inclusive school culture. 
cases of bullying before the pandemic ranked to 1 with weighted mean of 3.28. The contrasting observations and beliefs of the teacher respondents as regards to the establishments of inclusive school culture proves that they have limited understanding on what inclusiveness means. Table 3.2 shows the challenges relative to the learning process. Teaching inclusive learners in the manner appropriate to their needs and situations got the highest weighted mean of 3.34. This means that although localized curriculum resources are available, it does not suffice. It signifies that teachers' knowledge and resources on inclusive education are not sufficient when it comes to the learning process. Table 4.1 shows the appearing reasons as to why the challenges exist. This should be eradicated or addressed to be able to successfully implement inclusive education among elementary schools at District 6. The needs for instructional adaptation is proven without doubt. Good day everyone, I'm Rizal Ferrer, together with Ms. Judith Tapito from Benebues Integrated School to present the research entitled Project PPT Parent-Peer-Teacher Alliance Joint Convergence of Para-Teachers Towards Students' Engagement. DEPED Order Number 12 Series of 2020 highlighted a basic education learning continuity plan to ensure the learning continuity through K-12 curriculum adjustments, alignment of learning materials, and proper orientation of parents or guardians of learners. Learners' engagement is a primary predictor of academic success. Based on the study of Wang and PEC 2013 engages students through the entrance Intrinsically motivated involvement with learning are less likely to engage in delinquent behavior and are at lower risk for school achievement and dropout. On hand, disaffected students are at an elevated state of risk for sustained underachievement, dropout, and involvement in delinquent behavior. According to the study of Horifichter 2021, peer, parent, and teachers provide a powerful context for school students' well-being. In addition, major sources of social influence on the development of students' academic engagement and motivation includes parents, teachers, and peers, according to Wang and Eccles 2012. When Eba West Integrated School implemented blended distance learning wherein classes were divided into synchronous and asynchronous, students' engagement in attending all Online classes and output submissions are low. Few students attend synchronous sessions and submissions of learning outputs is negligible. This action research paper has been designed considering the benefits it could give not only to the students in BWIS but also the students all over the division. These sought answers to the following questions. 1. Was the level of students' engagement in BDL in terms of online attendance and output submission? 2. How does the utilization of Project PPT increase students' engagement in BDL? How does the students' engagement compare before and after the implementation of Project PPT in BDL in terms of online attendance and output submission? And what innovative plan of activities may be proposed to increase students' engagement in BDL? The study utilized mixed method research design. The participants are 30 grade 11 parents and students and 25 grade 12 parents and student. The study used purposive sampling, an online interview, observation, and online monitoring and submission of outputs and online attendance are conducted. For data analysis, frequency was used. Ethical consideration and constant consultation with parents are observed in the conduct of the research process. For the results, this group depicts the level of students' engagement in BDL for online attendance prior to the adoption of PPT. In G11, Einstein, 58 of 61 students attend online classes, followed by G12 Galilee, which has 22 out of 24 students, or 92%, and it's at standing outstanding level. This section has the most number of attendees because they are made up of STEM students who are doing well and adjusting well to the new way of learning. This is followed by G11 Plato, G12 Aristotle, and G11 Socrates. G11 Aquinas and G12 Locke, on the other hand, had the lowest attendance rates with 32 out of 42 and 37 out of 42 or 76% and satisfactory level, respectively. This graph shows students' engagement in terms of output submission in a Google Classroom. G12 Aristotle and G11 Einstein on its outstanding level. Since they belong to STEM class and are eager to complete their learning, 
learning outputs via Google Classroom. G11 Plato Fellows, then G11 Socrates, G12 Aristotle, and G11 Aquinas. G12 Luck had the fewest submission with 35 out of 49 students or 72%. Project PPT improved students' collaboration, fostered parent-teacher student relationship, improved students' output submission, and increases number of online attendees per session in all subject areas. This graph shows the comparison of senior high school's online attendance before and after the implementation of Project PPT. It is very evident that students' online attendance increased to outstanding level. This graph shows the comparison of senior high school students' output submission before and after the implementation of Project PPT. It is very evident that students' submission and compliance increased to 100% in all sections. Based on the results of the study, the following conclusions were drawn. These are the recommendations. Project PPT shall be utilized by other grade levels, specifically junior high school, to increase their online attendance and output submission in Google Classroom and other platforms. Project PPT is recommended to increase students' engagement in school activities, even virtual. And Project PPT is an excellent way to collaborate with parents to increase student engagement. Assessing selected key performance indicators as basis for individualized intervention planning. An action research of Joseph Emmanuel Q. de Guzman, Principal 1 of Santa Rita Aplaya Elementary School. Performance indicators are among the statistics that education administrators need to conduct proper planning and implementation of various intervention activities geared towards the benefits of their learners. These statistics help them measure the efficiency of the efforts and can help mitigate negative effects that hinder the achievement of the school and its learners. Several key performance indicators are computed periodically to help school leaders determine the direction of the school for the short term and long term. Each key performance indicator provides an insight to a particular management aspect that a school leader must be able to look into in a more comprehensive manner. Key performance indicators help the school leader assess the current situation and determine the strategies that he must do to ensure that the school moves forward. It gives him a baseline to work with so he can plan accordingly. Analyzing the KPIs help the leader identify which areas need support, which areas are weak, and which areas represent opportunities for the administrations to tap into. The researcher sought to assess key performance indicators for his current station so he can have a baseline for the establishment of intervention activities that can benefit the learners and improve the management level of practice. Research questions. What are the key performance indicators that may have a significant impact on a school's overall performance and efficiency with respect to its management level? What are the possible challenges that exist that can hinder the improvement of the KPIs? What intervention plan can the researcher craft to increase the identified KPIs and affect positive change for the school? Methodology. The researcher decided to pursue the study using the scripted research model as he thought to describe the present situation to come up with possible solutions to various concerns. The researcher used documentary analysis to gather the necessary data for the study. Data for the last three years were considered to generate the necessary comparisons to help come up with the results. Once the data was analyzed and disambiguated, the researcher was able to produce the necessary recommendations and craft the action plan. Based on the figure, we can see that the overall enrollment figures at Santa Rita Applied Elementary School is increasing from 291 to 304 to 309. However, upon deeper analysis of the figures, the school had managed to identify the possibility that the enrollment gradually declining as several education plans might affect the number of learners going to school at SRAES. Some of the learning populace may seek to transfer to other schools or leave the neighborhood for good, which would cause a decline in the enrollment. Simple dropout rate. For school year 2019-2020, the school registered a rate of 1.16%, which was 0.16% higher than the target. In 2020-2021, the figure rose to 1.18%, which was 0.18% higher than expected. And for school year 2021-2022, however, the figure rose to 3%, which translated to 9 learners. The participation at SRAES fluctuates, but is still in the higher boundaries, which is arguably better than envisioned. The cohort survival rate has an upward trend, which in itself is a positive indicator. In 2019-2020, the school registered a rate of 80%, which was a bit low, but still higher than the expected level. In the next school year, 2020-2021, it improved to 83.33, which represented a 3.33% increase from the previous. For school year 2021-2022, the figure skyrocketed to 96%, which represented a 12.67% increase from the previous year. For the three years, the school registered a 16% increase overall. We can glean from the graph that the transition rate for the past three years has seen a huge fluctuation. 
For 2019-2020, the school registered a rate of 95%, which is within the higher bounds. However, in 2020-2021, the school registered a rate of only 68.42%, which was a huge decrease representative of 26.58%. In school year 2021-2022, the school had a better rate of 100%. A more in-depth analysis of the statistics showed that the rate plummeted due to the most of the learners in 2020-2021, choosing not to pursue their secondary education fully and formally due to the effects of the pandemic. The results for failure English seem promising as there aren't any non-readers identified. However, it doesn't mean that there aren't any struggling readers as evidenced by the learners under frustration in instructional categories. The results of the failure for Filipino also show enough promise. However, it also gives the school administrator a somewhat alarming sense that the literacy level of Filipino is poised for a much-needed intervention. The school that is cognizant of the number of non-numerates is pretty alarming. However, the number of new numerates and numerates combined at 30.96% still holds enough promise and potential that the necessary intervention strategies, the number of non-numerates for the post-test, will be reduced significantly. The presented key performance indicators show that there is significant impact on school performance and efficiency with regards to school management practices. Although there are factors that are beyond the school's purview, it's still important that the school administration try its best to ensure that the KPS will continue an upward trend.
Good day everyone. It's my pleasure to present to you our research paper entitled Rethinking Goal Orientation Basis on Fostering Mastery Oriented Classroom Approach. Researchers are Annabel A. Senko and Marilyn A. Fra. Goal orientation is a mental framework that determines individuals approaches for achievement situations. In education, Goal orientation of students is classified into mastery and performance goal orientations. Mastery goal orientation is associated with the desire to develop competence and increase knowledge and understanding through effortful learning. Whereas, performance goal orientation may be referred to as a desire to gain favorable judgment of one's competence. Among these goal orientations, the first or the mastery goal orientation is typically associated with more desirable outcomes such as high engagement, intrinsic motivation, and persistence. The engagement of students toward mastery may prove to have a positive academic achievement. Students with inclination to performance approach as their priority may result to less mastery. This study strongly assumes that every teacher should know the goal orientation of their students. This knowledge may help teachers better facilitate learning by shifting to classroom approach which orientation is toward mastery. The goal of this study is to help students and their teachers of Baleta Integrated School become aware of their goal orientation. Subsequently, the awareness and students' orientation may help teachers devise a way to shift the performance orientation into mastery through mastery-oriented approach. Thus, the researchers come up with the following research questions. First, what is the personal goal orientation of students towards academics? What is the extent to which teachers promote performance and mastery orientations in their class? And lastly, how does the perception of teachers and students and the goal orientation of students towards academics differ? For the methodology, 75 junior high school and 37 senior high school students of Baleta Integrated School were utilized as subject of this study as well as the 28 teachers for school year 2021-2022. The study was conducted using quantitative descriptive approach, using questionnaire as its main data gathering tool. The goal orientation includes mastery, performance approach, and performance avoidance goal orientation. Descriptive statistical tools such as frequency, weighted mean, percentage and rank were used to analyze the data. The results of the data analysis provides many significant findings. First, there is a conclusive but not satisfactory evidence that the student respondents have a mastery goal orientation towards academics. Second, evidence shows that the teachers have a general perception that their class manifests mastery goal orientation. Third, based on the data, there are contradicting responses between teachers and students pertaining to students' goal orientation towards academic. And lastly, the findings suggest that the goal orientation of students may be shifted towards mastery goal orientation through learning experiences that foster mastery goal orientation. For the teaching strategies that may foster mastery goal orientation among learners, first, be a role model to a mastery approach. Second, give positive feedback. Third, intensify a culture of collaboration and cooperation among the class. And lastly, decrease emphasis on social comparison. And here are the references that we use in this study. Once again, 
This is our research paper, Rethinking Goal Orientation, Basis on Fostering Mastery-Oriented Classroom Approach. Good day everyone. We the researchers Jessica H. Cabases and Kathleen P. Garcia would like to present to you our research study entitled Lived Experiences of ABM Students Through the Participation in the Project SPL Simulation Powered Learning for the Enhancement of the Career Skills. Objectives of the study. The study aims to number one to describe the lived experiences of the informants in participating in the project SPL. Number two to determine the career skills developed by the informants through project SPL. Number three to determine the implication of project SPL in acquiring informants career skills and to suggest ways to enhance the culminating activity of the project. Research methodology. Research design. The study utilized the qualitative descriptive thematic synthesis research method. The uh, study utilized 10 grade 11 students who participated in the culminating activity of a SPL project as participants. The study utilized an interview guide question as the main instrument in collecting the data. The answers of the informants were thoroughly transcribed and encoded by putting phrases, text, and sections of the transcript. Coding matrix was used to classify each category of the text. Results and discussion. Table 1 shows the lived experiences of the informants in participating in the SPL. They perceive that the simulation is a training to discover new learning and various skills, an activity of the actual experience in creating business and helps in their future job. Hence, through the participation of the culminating activity of the project SPL, the informants experience a fun and roasting and had a good time while learning. However, some felt nervous and considered the activity in the project SPL as challenging, but they learn a lot. Simulation enhances both substantive knowledge and critical and analytical thinking skills. Most of all, simulation provides fun and memorable educational experience according to Shellman and Turan 2006. Table number two depicts the career skills acquired through the participation of the project SPL. The informants who participated in the culminating activity gave an opportunity to develop their career skills that they will be able to use in their future workplace. These skills are the employability skills, communication skills, critical thinking skills, and being creative. Along with this, they also have enhanced their self-esteem, decision-making skills, time management, and teamwork skills. Table number three presents the implication of the project SPL in acquiring career skills. According to the performance, participating in the simulation activity had impact in developing their career skills for it gave them awareness of being adaptable and how to be prepared in the workplace. Furthermore, this served as a basis for decision making for future job and guide in putting up the business. Here are the suggestions on how to enhance the culminating activity for ABM students. Number one, conduct the culminating activity of the project SPL in the face-to-face -face modality adhering the IATF safety protocol. Number two, administer an actual implementation of business proposal. Number three, conduct webinars, symposium, and exploring career information as a guide for career planning. A tuning disaster response to students at risk of dropping out at Wenceslao Trinidad Memorial National High School through the ALP program, a research and its implementation presentation by Gemma V. Atienza from Batangas Province. This study investigated the lived experiences of indigent households of students at risk of dropping out at Wenceslao Trinidad Memorial National High School in Laurel, Batangas after the Taal eruption in 2020 and explore the extent to which they can name and describe the disaster response available to them in the post-disaster period. Additionally, this study explored the support and assistance these indigents would choose for themselves to successfully build resilience against the impacts of disasters. An iterative, unstructured interview process was conducted with participants consisting of seven heads of the family from households of Sardis due to low socioeconomic status. Three major themes emerged from the analysis of the data. Disaster vulnerability due to poverty. Overwhelming provision of relief goods and non-food items. 
and sustainable development through education. Key findings suggest that indigents were overwhelmed by the support and assistance available after the disaster, while data suggests perceived lower disaster impact if the education of children is given attention. Which is why a sustainable program that integrates disaster risk reduction agenda into a poverty reduction strategy was provided to address the problematic themes that emerge from the data. Taal, tulong at alalay sa Laurelian program provides sustainable development through education and healthcare to children and their families who have been most vulnerable to disasters like the Taal volcano eruption in January 2020 and the heat of COVID-19 pandemic in the same year. In addition to being a response to the problematic themes that emerged in this study, the AL 1.0 program aimed at addressing the school's priority improvement area on dropout rate reduction in school year 2019-2020. By partnering with individuals and groups since 2020, it has delivered services that contribute meaningfully to resilience building and helping our SARDOS to continue their studies. The implementation of the AL 2.0 program grew district-wide in the following year. For school year 2021-2022, it has again extended its implementation to schools in Laurel District and Banyaga National High School in Agoncillo. Thus, the AL 3.0 program now stands for Tulong at Alalay sa Agoncillo at Laurel. The AL program caters to the youth and communities in Laurel and Agoncillo, Batangas respectively. Families within the high-risk barangays received psychological first aid immediately after lifting their community lockdown. This was conducted by the invited trained volunteers from the Focolari Movement. In December 2020, the partnership with Youth for United World brought Christmas joy, as its Noche Buena project reached families greatly affected by Taal eruption. Taal program Bukas Paladagaytay Foundation Incorporated continues to support its beneficiaries through various projects. Project Connect helps students deal with the difficulties generated by the transition from face-to-face -to, -face to distance learning. The provision of learning devices with installed educational apps, pocket Wi-Fi, including load allowances to scholars, was a great relief to students and their families. The close partnership with Bukas Palad also allowed the AL beneficiaries to enjoy the provision of allowance for other school needs within the maximum allowable expenses for the year through Project Calidad. Project Support supported the beneficiaries with free monthly groceries and COVID prevention supplies for the time being and due to lack of stable employment and source of livelihood of the families. Though the main focus of the program is on education, the approach is holistic in such a way that the aspects of health, medical, economic, human, and spiritual needs of the beneficiaries are taken into account. Through Project U Kaagapay, parents were encouraged to attend parent education seminars and recollection to better support the education of their children and, in a way, to better become a family. As a way of giving back, Beneficiaries of the program actively render their services in school and the community organized and participated by the program proponent through Taal's Project Lingkod Pa. These community involvement activities allow each beneficiary to pay the support they receive forward. Taal program's implementation since 2020 not only reduced the school's dropout rates in the public and private schools in Laurel District and in the selected school in Agoncillo District, but has also contributed to the resilience building of households of low socioeconomic status, as evidenced by their written testimonials. Good day, this is Dr. Anselmo L. Hulumbayan, Principal 2 of Kailaway National High School, Nasubuis District, Division of Batangas. My study is entitled, Leadership Competencies of School Heads, of public secondary junior high school as correlates to organizational effectiveness. As the world of work continues to undergo changes at a rapid pace, organizations and leaders must be made conscious enough to explore alternative means of developing knowledge, skills, and abilities 
needed by leaders to succeed in a dynamic environment. The researcher strongly believes that conduct of this study will improve his leadership capabilities and other school heads and will increase maximize effectiveness and improvements in the organization. The primary purpose of the study was to assess the leadership competencies and organizational effectiveness of school heads in public secondary junior high school in the division of Batangas. Instructional competencies, creating student learning climate, human resource management, and professional development, parent involvement, and community partnership, personal and professional attributes, and interpersonal effectiveness. Specifically, this study sought answers for the following questions. What is the demographic profile of school-led respondents in terms of age, sex, civil status, highest educational attainment, position, number of years in service? What are the leadership competencies of school-led respondents? What are the organizational effectiveness of the school-led respondents? Is there a significant relationship between leadership competencies and organizational effectiveness? The respondents of this study are 108 school heads and 240 public school teachers. The scripted research design was employed and questionnaires was used as the main tool for data collection. The following procedure was considered in gathering data. The data revealed that most of the school head respondents are within age bracket of 41 to 50 and 21 to 40 teacher respondents. It was also revealed that female outnumbered male respondents. This is the result of school head and teachers respondent in the area of instructional competencies, wherein the respondents were rated them both outstanding. A close examination of table three shows that the respondents public junior high school head outstanding in terms of instructional competencies. A closer look at Table 4 reveals the school heads of public junior high school are outstanding in their leadership competencies, particularly in the domain of creating student learning climate. As shown in Table 5, it can be noted that the respondents rated the school heads outstanding in terms of human resource management and professional development. Apparently, the school heads were noted to be outstanding in parent involvement and community partnerships. The findings indicates that they are professionally equipped with skills and values to be fully successful in leading educational organizations, a harmonious partnership with external stakeholders and community as well. As shown in Table 7, it can be noted that the respondents rated the school heads outstanding in terms of leadership competencies, particularly in terms of personal and professional attributes and interpersonal effectiveness. Based on the results, outstanding rating of the school head implies that they are equipped with leadership competencies that whatever trials problematic situations that will come along, these school heads can still be expected to perform their tasks, duties, and responsibilities very commendably. The existence of significant relationship between leadership, competencies, and organizational effectiveness of school heads implies that those with adequate knowledge of conceptual, human skills, and leadership competencies of school management can make a difference in managing the public secondary schools as educational organization. The following are the research conclusions. This study came up with the following recommendations. And these are the references used in this study. This is Dr. Anselmo L. Hulumbayan aspires to lead justly. Thank you and God bless.
so much for accepting my paper. Today, I will present to you my study entitled ESL Teachers' Attitudes and Challenges in Utilizing Authentic ELT Materials in the Language Classroom. It is said that quality learning is the outcome of quality teaching. And since teachers have been highly regarded as the source of knowledge for students, it is imperative for every teacher to consider the advantages and drawbacks of his preferences in choosing appropriate and interesting materials for teaching. Materials, according to Tomlinson 2013, can be anything that facilitates the teaching and learning of a language. Several studies in ELT prove that there is a need to expose second language students to real language, which entails showing and allowing students to see for themselves how English, as the universal language, is used in a specific linguistic context. Hence, the essence of utilizing authentic materials in teaching English as a second language is deemed significant in this study. This study mainly focused on determining what constitutes teachers' decisions in using authentic materials in English language teaching by determining their attitudes and their challenges towards utilization of authentic ELT materials in the language classroom. In conducting this study, quantitative method of research, specifically the descriptive design of research, was utilized to explore the relationship between two or more variables through correlational analysis. In choosing the sample for the study, non-probabilistic sampling strategy, specifically purposive sampling, was employed. Conclusively, 195 English teachers served as the respondents of the study. As for the research instrument, a partially adopted survey questionnaire was utilized from the study of Omar and Mekael 2020, Wazain 2012, Khan and Berdar 2009. Prior to the distribution of the research questionnaire, approval from the school's division superintendent of SDO Batangas Province was sought to ensure full participation of the target teacher respondents. In analyzing the data, ranking, weighted mean, standard deviation, and Spearman rank correlation coefficient were utilized to analyze and interpret quantitative data. As shown in the table, study revealed that most junior high school ESL teachers have a positive attitude toward utilizing authentic ELT materials as indicated by the resulted composite mean of 3.42, showing that all the respondents agreed with the cited indicators. Among all the indicators cited, exploitability ranked first. With exploitability, as defined in this study, refers to the extent to which authentic materials can be used for teaching teaching purposes in the classroom. Based on the data presented in Table 8, study revealed that most challenges encountered by junior high school ESL teachers in utilizing authentic ELT materials are primarily rooted in a lack of teacher knowledge and lack in technical know-how. The resultant composite mean of 2.78 strongly implies that most of the respondents have difficulty in utilizing authentic ELT materials in the language classroom due to language difficulties that do not suit the language level of students, cultural conflicts that may hinder students' comprehension, and management of student-centered activities and tasks which complement the use of authentic materials, most especially a large class size. This implies that most of the respondents who have a positive attitude towards using authentic materials encountered more challenges as they utilize authentic materials in language teaching. As for the conclusion, the most used authentic materials in language teaching are video clips, songs, and photographs since video materials can provide language learners with the pragmatic aspects of learning English as a second language. For the recommendations in using authentic materials in the language classroom, ESL teachers should always consider the context and culture of the target language to provide learners with genuine learning opportunities in enhancing their linguistic and communicative competence. ESL teachers must set their goals first before deciding on what authentic materials, tasks, and activities should be used in teaching the target language to students. 
Thank you so much everyone for listening. I hope that you enjoyed listening and watching my presentation. God bless everyone. Good day everyone. I am going to present my research entitled Exploring the Teacher-Made Video Lesson Structure Basis for the Proposed Collaborative Video Learning Resource Development Mechanism in Tulai Elementary School. I am Larry M. Rualios. Even before the pandemic, Educational videos are widely used learning resources for distance and face-to-face -face teaching. Educators believe that high-quality videos help produce higher learning outcomes. But producing high-quality videos is a complex task for teachers because it requires technical knowledge such as recording and editing. In Tulai Elementary School, the teachers produce videos using their learning initiatives and recording strategies with minimal help from other people. The digital outputs have earned qualification for classroom observation and may not be appropriate for children's utilization due to some pedagogical recording and editing needs enhancement. The school's objective is not only to produce quality video lessons for classroom observation, but also to help our learners improve their competencies through viewing and engagement in these resources. Defining the structure of the production process can be the initial step. This study describes the lived experiences of teachers in Tulai Elementary School in educational video production during the past two years of the pandemic. It also identifies their pedagogical and technical competencies in video production. The study considers the teams derived from these experiences and their video creation competencies in developing their proposed collaborative audiovisual learning resource development in the school. It was a mixed method study employing phenomenological and descriptive research designs. 19 teachers who used video lessons as alternative classroom observation participated in the focus group discussion and survey. Two teams, struggling while learning an admission of weakness and dependency, emerged from their experiences in video lesson production. Teachers consider creating video lessons a highly technical task. They have struggled with several technical processes while exhausting solutions to keep themselves updated and equipped. In recording their presentation without assistance, the participants disclose their susceptibility to commit mistakes due to handling of the script and gadget control. In video editing, they had difficulty with the compatibility of their gadget to their chosen software and animated pictures, but they admit they are still learning. The teachers confirmed they could not create quality videos alone. Those who attempted to do all tasks in the production do overtime work and still ask for assistance later. Some are not yet skilled in technical applications and they claim they are still in the learning process. Seasoned teachers sought the assistance of their daughters or co-teachers in video recording and editing applications. Five teachers stood out in video production. These teachers help by acting as directors, recording assistants, editing tutors, and file size controllers. The teachers considered themselves less skilled in the technical aspects of video creation compared to the pedagogical structures. Survey results reflected that teachers have a moderately high level of competence in writing scripts and storyboards based on the lesson design as well as using verbal and nonverbal communication strategies. Further, teachers considered themselves less skilled in incorporating visual effects and capturing a B-roll. Based on the teacher's experiences and level of competence in video production, the study proposed a collaborative mechanism for their pedagogical and technical learning development needs. The teacher's engagement in video production is expected to boost continuous professional growth in learning resource development 
through the mechanism designed to foster job-embedded learning while generating quality videos for learners. The study suggests implementing the proposed collaborative mechanism in video production to ensure the creation of quality educational videos at the school level. The study also recommends the conduct of in-service training on the technical aspects of video creation. Thanks for listening. Good day everyone. This is Orlando C. Acoba, teacher one of Cesar Oronia Elementary School, District of Balete from Schools Division of Batangas, and today I will be presenting my research paper for virtual conference of basic education researchers. Let's begin. The research is entitled The Extent of Adaptation of Elementary Teachers to Remote Teaching in Balete District and the Level of Their Instructional Competencies Basis for a Proposed Intervention Plan. The context of this presentation includes the introduction, the methodology, the results and discussion, and the conclusion and recommendation. To start off, let's identify what remote teaching actually means. Remote teaching is one of the teaching methods that occurs outside a physical classroom. Teachers are separated from their learners in time and distance. This type of teaching may be synchronous, where students watch teachers deliver the lectures live or asynchronous, where learners watch lectures recording at a later point in time. However, there are challenges that are can be foreseen in implementing this project, such as 1. Teachers are unfamiliar with many of the online platforms that are used for teaching. 2. Lack of adequate professional development and training to undergo remote teaching. 3. Struggling to get students to engage with coursework. And 4. Difficulty getting students to collaborate with each other. And all of these are the issues, problems that the researcher are hoping to seek answers for. Now, you might ask, why do I intend to pursue such a study? Well, I will give you four reasons. One, timely since pandemic is still ongoing. Two, can strengthen the relationship between the teacher and parents. Three, additional ways of teaching and learning process. Four, answers the calls, needs, and demands of the new normal in edu. Now, let's move on to the research methodology with the data gathering procedure. And for the first step, the researcher requested permission from the public schools district supervisor. And for the step two, the researcher sought the principal school head approval from the different schools. And finally, upon approval, the researcher provided link for remote gathering of data and personally distributed the questionnaire to the respondents who do not have access for remote gathering of data. And furthermore, for the sample and sampling method used in this study, the researcher used purposive sampling, where the respondents were chosen purposively without any interference from the researcher with themselves. This is ensure an unbiased study with, a, with an objective point of view. It is also shown the statistical tools that, re, that the researcher will be going to use. And the population of this study will consist of nine public elementary school heads and 96 public elementary teachers for a total of 105 all the way from Balete District. And now let us move on to the results and discussion. In this slide, present the significant difference between the perception of the two groups of respondents on the adaptation of remote teaching. It's being shown in the table that the four variables null hypothesis were rejected. 
moving forward with the conclusions and recommendations. With all these and based on the foregoing findings, the researcher drawn the following conclusions that in the demographic profile, teacher one and health teacher three were the most dominant in terms of position, that there were more female respondents than the male in terms of gender. And most of the respondents were married, while most of them were at the age bracket of 46 to 50 years old and 36 to 40 years old, respectively. As to the length of years in service, most of these school heads reached 11 to 15 years, while 16 to 20 years for the teacher's category, respectively. Now, in the light of the above findings conclusions, the researcher recommends the school heads may continue giving technical assistance to the teachers to grow more and be mindful of the challenges brought about by remote teaching. Two, so, the teachers may improve and facilitate effectively the remote teaching process as well enrich the instructional competencies by attending webinars, seminars, lab sessions, and short the net for recent breakthroughs. Good day, everyone. I am Raylin M. Riosa from Pedro A. Paterno National High School, District of Calaca, Division of Batangas, presenting the research title, The Effect of Extracurricular Activities on Student Perceived Academic Self-Efficacy for Grade 8 Student of Pedro A. Paterno National High School. Extracurricular activities help and promote education while emphasizing strengths and enhancing skills. People have seen the new generation of students participating in school extracurricular activities. These are educational organization and institution activities created for the students. The co-curricular activities that the school offers enable the student to engage in many skillful and competitive endeavors. Moreover, the, these activities invite students to observe and practice virtues necessary in their daily living. Thus, the school offering high level of activities are doing a better job in developing student character. The researchers sought in increasing the level of awareness and understanding of the grade 8 student with regards to their academic performance brought about by school activities and existing organizations. This study, intended in recognizing the positive effects as well as the negative effects of the extracurricular activities, the researcher aimed to provide possible solution for the benefit of the grade 8 student in Pedro A. Paterno National High School through the recommendation of the study. And these are the research objectives. The survey descriptive method is used for this study in a form of online questionnaire using the Google form. Grade 8 students are given respective questionnaire in order to see how extracurricular activities encourage and support and influence them on their academic and social development. For the tool, the web-based questionnaire through Google form was used as the main instrument of the researcher in gathering data. And for the process, a letter of intent to the school head of the respondent school will be prepared and sent for the formality of asking permission to conduct the study. And the link of the questionnaire will be sent to the respondent and will be given enough time to answer. For a statistical treatment of data, in order to obtain the qualitative values needed and answer the problem posed in this study, the following statistical tools and treatment were used. The weighted mean, rank, frequency, four-point Likert scale, and the F-test. In Table 1, the greatest number of respondents, which are the 20 students, were all involved in the sports. Therefore, sport was given the priority of the most respondents in all extracurricular activities listed in the table. And the musical activities and Yes O Club in both 7th rank. Table 2, the primary reason of the grade 8 student of the participating extracurricular activities was to improve their talent and skills that got the first rank of 3.51. Rank 6 will be weighted mean of 3.20 which is prestige and recognition. 
Table 3 shows the distribution of respondent response as the effect of extracurricular activities on their academic performance. Then the court asking if the, they participate in an extracurricular activities and result of a more positive effect on my educational attainment got 14 in strongly agree, 19 in agree, 1 in disagree, and 1 in strongly disagree. It is shown in the table that 8 of the chosen respondents strongly agree that they actively participated in the discussion of other academic performance while 24 of them agree to disagree and one of them is strongly disagree. In this table, it is shown in the table that three of the respondents strongly agreed, 13 agreed, 18 disagreed, and one strongly disagreed, and their time in studying was lessened. Also, one of the respondents have strongly agreed, three agreed, 27 disagreed, and four have strongly disagreed that they cannot concentrate with the study. The results show that the respondents disagree to the disadvantages of involving extracurricular activities in their academic performances. Good day, researchers. I am Reggie Embalasbas from Taal Senior High School, District of Taal, Province of Batangas. I am here to present my study entitled, Ano Ga Ang Latest? Taal Senior High School one-click communication platform and disseminating information and updates using Project SMS Blast. In order to keep in touch with the students, parents, and other stakeholders, the institution established a messaging program by SMS that enables key information and announcement that the school community ought to know, such as disaster advisory, schedule of examination, school programs and meetings, and scholarship information advisory, among others. Moreover, according to DepEd Order No. 014, Series of 2020, Guidelines on the Required Health Standards in Basic Education Offices and Schools, Section 7 states that the department places a great emphasis on the importance of maintaining clear communication, consultation, and coordination with learners, teachers, personnel, parents, and other education stakeholders in this time of uncertainty. Taking all this into account, this research endeavor sought to widen the dissemination information mechanism and address the gap in communication posed by the various limitations, explore how the project SMS Blast or SMS Broadcasting of Latest Announcement to Students and Stakeholders. Address the problems identified and propose a sustainability plan so as to maximize the potential and positive impacts of such program and project. Specifically, it sought to answer the following questions. Number one, what are the challenges encountered by the students of Taal Senior High School in the dissemination of information and updates? Number two, how may the project SMS Blast address the problems encountered? And number three, based on the findings, what sustainability plan may be proposed to widen the dissemination of information and updates? A descriptive research design with a quantitative approach was employed in this research. Through the rounds of calculator at a 5% margin of error, a total of 286 respondents were chosen through stratified random sampling from the population of 1,112 senior high school students. A survey questionnaire was used as a major data gathering instrument. It was subjected to Cronbox Alpha and resulted 2.950, which means that the instrument is reliable and valid. Weighted mean, percentage, ranking were among the statistical tools employed. The composite mean of 3.22 demonstrated that the respondents agreed that they encountered challenges with the dissemination in information and updates, where most of the students do not have strong and regular internet connectivity for real-time information and updates and smartphones to be used in the class-created group chats. The respondents agreed that the project SMS Blast is an instant communication tool where the real-time feedback is possible and very easy to access since it is not dependent in the internet connection as evidenced by the weighted mean of 3.49 ranking first among the indicators. The researcher proposed a sustainability plan for Project SMS Blast that includes areas of concern, objectives, a strategic course of action, persons involved, and the time frame to widen the dissemination and information and updates. Project SMS Blast is a very direct and reliable channel of information. 
as a classroom advisor. It helps to improve communication among stakeholders while also increasing the effectiveness of our school. With Project SMS Blast, we can easily send mass informative text messages to hundreds and thousands of students, parents, and stakeholders. This is the most easy and reliable tool wherein everybody deserves to be up to date. One way to manage communications and keep parents, students, teachers, and other stakeholders like us in the local government unit informed and engaged is through Project SMS Blast initiated by Reggie Balasbas. This is substantial undertaking for any educational establishment so that this project should be replicated by all schools in the municipality of Taal, Batangas. Thank you for listening. I am now ready for your comments, suggestions, and clarifications. Good day everyone. My name is Ernie G. Santoyo. I am a STEM teacher to at Rosario Integrated National High School, Division of Batangas Province, and I am here to present to you my research entitled Introduction of Inclusive Learning Activity Sheet or ELAS in Teaching Hard Concepts in Chemical Education for STEM. Inclusive education encourages diversity of unique contribution of each student in the classroom. The goal of making, testing, and using the inclusive learning activity sheet is to teach hard chemical concepts to help STEM students improve their academic potential as independent learners in hard chemistry lessons. The study aims to introduce crafted inclusive self-learning material for skill-based subjects that have been carefully validated by the experts. The foundation of this study is set by the social constructivism and the process-oriented guided inquiry learning. The cross-method triangulation technique is used to collect and analyze data in this quasi-experimental study. Three evaluation stages, a pre-test, post-test, and a retention test were conducted and an adapted DEPED LMRDS validation instrument was used to ensure the quality of ELAS as self-learning material for general chemistry too. There were 28 STEM student participants from Rosario Integrated National High School who were purposefully sampled and five expert ELAS validators involved in the study. Before the study was conducted, participants read and signed a consent form outlining the nature, goal, and methodology of the research. Participants were guaranteed confidentiality and anonymity in the study report. The study utilizes a predictor criterion model as a framework in using ELAS in teaching general chemistry to lessons. For the research question number one, what is the level of acceptability of ELAS in general chemistry 2 in terms of objective, content, format, and language, presentation, and usefulness? Second, what is the level of the academic performance of students in general chemistry 2 before and after using ELAS? based on their pre-test, post-test, and retention test. Last, is there a significant difference in the academic performance of STEM student using ELAS based on pre-test, post-test, and retention test? For the results in discussion, acceptability of ELAS, Table 1 shows that the experts find ELAS to be well-written, having a composite mean value of 3.92 in objective, 3.80 in content, 3.72 in format and language, 3.68 in presentation, and 3.64 in usefulness. In general, ELAS has reached a highly acceptable mark. It provides a valid and reliable content in chemical education with a general acceptability value of 3.75. Furthermore, in table number 2, it shows that there is a significant increase in the number of STEM students' academic performance from pre-test with 25%, post-test with 46.43%, and retention test with 57.14 tests of outstanding performance in general chemistry 2 on lessons in acid and base neutralization reaction using ELAS indicates that inclusivity of self-learning material has a significant impact on students' academic achievement. 
Significant effects of ELAS in inclusive education for STEM. The participants who receive a series of lessons in general chemistry 2 using ELAS under three assessments, namely pre-test, post-test, and retention test, demonstrated significantly better peak flow of scores with a computed F ratio value of 3.45. The P value is 0 0.033, which is significant at P greater than 0 0.05 stating that there is a significant difference in the academic performance of the participant as they were assessed after a series of lessons using ELAS. For the conclusions, the developed ELAS in general chemistry 2 as assessed by the expert using the validation tool from DepEd LMRDS exhibited a highly acceptable measure based on five acceptability criteria. Second, a significant increase in the number of STEM students from pre-test with 25% up until resistance test with 57.14 of outstanding performance in general chemistry 2 in lessons in acid and base neutralization reaction using ELAS indicates that the inclusivity of SLMS has a significant impact on students' academic achievement. Lastly, Statistically, the developed ELAS for general chemistry 2 promotes significant positive change in increasing the academic performance and retention of lessons among STEM students. Numerous users from an epidemic have disrupted many classes, especially those as in primary education. Since they have been attending conventional face-to-face -face classes for a long time, learners were not accustomed to alternate learning delivery modalities Having said that many areas of learning had been impacted, especially laboratory experiments, e-learning strategies and web-based simulations were used by the researcher. Technology will not replace the great teachers, but technology in the hands of the great teachers can be transformational. Thus, the researcher came up with a project map of work, novel e-learning techniques and web-based simulations to optimize relevant knowledge, basis for the designing and innovation this study look at the use of simulation in e-learning techniques in science education. Simulator design considerations are made with a focus on the scientific course. The literature suggests that the simulation can be crucial to the learning of science. Through simulation, scientists can be realistic, carry out and observe real-world scientific experiments on a computer screen. The usage of online simulations like PET simulation and e-learning as a virtual scientific labs is investigated in this study. In order to reduce learning loss caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, this study seeks to uncertain whether past simulations used in conjunction with e-learning methodologies can optimize online learning. To assess students in being guided to do online experiments, e-learning is employed as a scaffolding medium. Two stages of the research were completed. Using path simulation, e-learning online platforms like Google Classroom in a few face-to-face -face classes. The first level involves in a direct trial of learning. Using a Google form and accessibility of the questionnaire, data collection is one of the tasks for the second stage. For the methodology of this study, descriptive method of research was used. The pretest and the process result was the main instrument for gathering the needed data for the study. There are 40 students in grade 10 participated in this research. Instead, the scope of the study was restricted to the answer provided by the aforementioned respondents, and analysis and interpretation were based on the information acquired. In collecting the data, the researcher conducted an interview and developed the questionnaire that was validated by the expert. The permit to conduct the study was used from the person of authority. The confidentiality of the result of the assessment was kept. In the figure 1, the MPS result increased from the PTAS result of 39.14 to 56.8%. An increase of 17.74%. This indicates that the result of the post-test in the PTAS deeper significantly. It shows the respondents agreed that the simulation in e-learning are usable in learning science. The collection of usability test data was obtained from the respondents in amount of 40 students from grade 10. The data shown that the questions or remarks as strongly agreed. From the results of this 
questionnaire, it can be seen that the majority of the users strongly agreed with all the statements. Based on the findings, the following conclusions are drawn. The first is, respondents agree that interactive simulations like PET are adaptable and powerful tools. Second, simulations are innovative techniques aids in deepening comprehension and engagement with the scientific method. Third, incorporating simulation into science instruction will also use success and have great advantages for both teachers and students. On the findings revealed in conclusions, the following recommendations are offered. First, nowadays, teachers are encouraged to use interactive simulations in their teaching process. Second, the use of simulation can enhance teaching activities in classroom and help students effectively understand science concepts. And the last, the researcher also recommends that further studies on the current situation of the teachers in the implementation of the new normal education can be conducted. The researcher would like to thank the following references. Ngayon sa iyo, Yarevel. Chonen Shaysol si Digare Inita. Chonen Hangugo Hagu. Yung asal sa inyong Inita, manaso panggap sa Inita. So in English, my name is Dr. Shaysol si Digala. I'm an English and foreign language teacher. Manaso panggap sa Inita means it is nice meeting you. So my research is entitled Development of Supplementary Materials in Teaching Korean Language in the Philippines. So for the rationality, in the Philippines, one of the languages currently offered under the Special Program in Foreign Language is the Korean language. This is in accordance with Deped Order No. 46, Series of 2012, or the Policy Guidelines on the Implementation of the SPF of Curricular Programs at the Secondary Level. With that, the Department of Education provided training among selected schools in NCR and Calabarzon. Those teachers are what we call as the SPFL scholars. And during the training, they experience different challenges in learning Korean language. And with that, they apply different practices to be able to cope up with the different challenges that they encountered. Having this in mind, the researcher as one of the SPFL scholars deemed it necessary to, to, to create a study that will provide a supplementary materials to help the teachers and learners learn Korean language more easily. So for the statement of the problem, so this uh, study will try to identify the different challenges encountered by the SPFL scholars in learning Korean language to determine the practices that they perceive to be effective in learning Korean language and to identify the impact of learning Korean language as well as to develop a supplementary materials based from the results of the study. So for the key literatures, according to Ethan 2020, in the globalized world where mobility was facilitated, learning a language was a wonderful benefit. So Morgan added that to understand a language is to examine the culture that surrounds it. And according to Korean Language Guide 2019, um, said that not like other nations, nation, the sound as well as the structure of the Korean language is confusing. So with the literatures, it means that learning Korean language is important, especially in globalization, and it is important to understand its culture and according to Korean language guide, we will encounter different challenges because the structure of Korean language is not the same with the structure that we know. So for the research methodology, methodology the researcher will employ sequential explanatory design by Crashwell, and of course, the subjects of the study will be 32 SPFL scholars from NCR and Calabarzon. So for the findings of the study, in terms of the challenges encountered in Korean language, it was revealed that the subjects encountered sh challenges in terms of um, knowing the uh, Koreans vary their language depending on who they're talking with and writing the correct spelling of the words that have the same sounds. They also find it hard to memorize vocabulary words, its function in a sentence, and getting used to the verb order and memorizing the verb she, she, 
changes. Um, in addition to this, um, the practices employed by the subjects are the following. Okay, so they use songs in order to easily understand some Korean language words. And they watch Korean drama to be able to get used about Korean conversations. They avoid romanization of Korean words. And they use flashcards as a drill activity to improve the retention in Korean language. In terms of the impact of learning Korean language, it was revealed that learning requires a lot of practice and the right motivation before you can master the language completely. It provides language opportunities as well as job opportunities. And exposure to a new language is necessary to provide input and opportunity to use the language. And in order to understand Korean language, was one must accept cultural differences. For the recommendation, the SPF All Korean scholars and language may encounter challenges in learning Korean language. But instead of feeling disappointed, the learners can ask help from their peers, teachers, and native speakers of Korean language. Okay, so the SPF All learners may apply the different practices to be able to cope up with the different challenges that they may encounter. So. As stated in Article 13, Section 2 of the 1987 Constitution of the Philippines, the state shall protect and promote the rights of citizens to quality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such education available to all. As a SPED teacher, I want to give my learners the best SPED services they deserve. And part of crafting the learning materials appropriate to our learners, we do assessment. That is why I conducted a research study, Teachers' Assessment of Learners with this Ability under the DepEd Transition Program. Good day, everyone. My name is Lisa Briones, a special education teacher from Paralang Central ng Mataas na Kahoy, SDO Batangas Province. One of the DepEd goals is for all learners with these abilities to become self-reliant, purposeful, and productive members of the families, communities, and society. Thus, it created different programs for all types of learners. One of these is the transition program for adult learners with this ability. The program is already given to us, but the question is, how are we going to implement the program? Considering our learners have different needs, what learning materials are we, are we going to give to them? Or how can we make learning materials? As teachers, part of our job is to assess our learners with this ability so we can give them the best learning experiences, especially um, to our learners with special needs. We do assessment to determine our learning goals and to plan the appropriate program for them. In order for me to have a clear definition of my research, I was able to formulate four objectives. The first one is to determine the level of fitness requirements of the learners based on the seven transition curriculum package. The second one is to determine the extent of manifestations of their disability based on three aspects. And the third one is to determine the DepEd initiatives for the effectiveness of the SPED implementation. And then finally, to craft a learning activities based on the results. My study is anchored in three theories, which became the basis of the formulation of the learning activities under the transition program. In order for me to gather the appropriate data, I was able to craft a survey questionnaire based on objectives one and two, and then for me to determine the DEPED initiative for the effectiveness of the SPED implementation, I was able to conduct a focus group discussions to SPED implementers. A total of 115 SPED teachers in the entire division of Batangas province were became the respondents of my study. And after analyzing and interpreting the data, I was able to formulate the learning activities for all learners with these abilities. As reflected in presentation, the level of fitness requirements of learners with these abilities in all the transition curriculum package is low, which means that they really need to improve on each of the competencies included in the curriculum. In determining the extent of manifestations of their characteristics, 
it says here that in physical and cognitive aspects, their characteristics are slightly ma uh, manifested. However, on emotional and behavioral, they moderately manifested the characteristics listed on the survey. To sum up the DEPED initiatives, the theme teacher professional development, partnership, and government support were included uh, in the theme generated from focus group discussion. The learning activities created are based on the results of the study. Um, based on the results, the following conclusions were drawn. Learners with disabilities have difficulty demonstrating the learning competencies under the DEPED transition program prescribed by the DEPED. SPED teachers describe their learners with disability under the transition program as having low physical, cognitive ability, and behavioral and emotional ability. The DEPED has initiated programs on teacher training, parental empowerment, collaboration, and budget allocation to improve SPED program implementation. The assessment of level of fitness requirements and manifestations of characteristics of learners with disabilities can be used contextualize and prepare learning activities under the transition program. And these are the recommendations of my study. Other similar researches can be undertaken to address the perceived delimitation of my study. That would be all. Thank you so much and have a nice day, everyone. Psychological first aid is an evidence-informed intervention model to assist learners, teachers, individuals, and families in the immediate aftermath of a disaster or emergency event and can be used by any trained staff member or school administrator. PFA consists of assessing needs and concerns, helping people to address basic needs, listening without pressuring people, comforting people, linking people to information, services, and social supports, and protecting them from further harm. It was originally designed as an evidence-informed approach to replace the widely implemented debriefing method, which has been shown to increase the risk for development of adverse psychological outcomes, 
such as symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. And due to the pandemic, are we all ready to go back to the normal situation mentally, emotionally, and psychologically? Aside from preparing the school premises and adjust to the need of the new health protocol in schools, the proponent of this research together with the school head and a division PFA provider planned and conducted a psychological first aid training for teachers last March 18, 2022 to further assess their needs for the upcoming implementation of limited face-to-face -face classes on March 26 of the same year, which also capacitate them with their needed facilitation skills. And to evaluate its effectiveness, the proponent and School Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Coordinator, Marie Crismadel S. Magtibay, Teacher 3, came up with this study entitled, Effectiveness of Psychological First Aid Training for Teaching Personnel as Preparation for Pilot Implementation of Limited Face-to-Face -face Classes at Bolo Elementary School. The Department of Education would like to further strengthen the role of teachers as the education frontline amid COVID-19 pandemic, specifically during the limited pilot implementation of face-to-face -face classes, through the provision of psychosocial support services to all learners. It might be easy to say that the teachers are prepared enough in handing these learners after the crisis that they might have experienced. It is then mandated under DepEd Task Force COVID-19 Memorandum No. 84 Series of 2020 on Corrigendum to DTFC Memo No. 82 Series of 2020 on Mental Health and Psychosocial Support Services that psychosocial support services shall be given to the learners during the first hour or the first week of the pilot implementation of face-to-face -face classes therefore leading to the need of the teachers to be knowledgeable in PFA and should acquire the needed facilitation skills. Thus, this study aims to answer the following questions. The study used a descriptive quantitative type of research. Questionnaire was the main instrument used in data gathering to generate the needed information from the 18 teaching personnel and participants before and after the training through Google Forms and use the Likert scale. Through the following formula, results were analyzed and interpreted. Table 1 shows that as a primary worker to provide guidance and counseling during the pilot implementation of face-to-face -face classes, it is therefore imperative for the teachers to be knowledgeable about psychological first aid as well as the different facilitation skills for the goal of the program to be met without having problems of mishandling these minds. Meanwhile, Table 2 represents the facilitation skills that the teachers already possess before the PFA training, but then the lack of guidance on how PFA training is applied and adopted, significant shortcoming of reporting PFA training delivery, lack of robust PFA training evaluation, and clarity around outcomes are some of the reasons why it is not that easy to provide PFA through different social media platforms. That is one of the reasons why despite being able to attend online psychosocial support services, trainings, and webinars, needed facilitation skills were not fully acquired. While Table 3 shows the facilitation skills acquired by teachers after the provision of PFA training, it is evident that it was helpful enough for the teachers to be able to acquire the needed facilitation skills and will be able to prepare them in providing psychosocial support services during the first hour of the first week of the limited pilot implementation of classes. Every skill fell under the strongly agree verbal interpretation, which is a strong evidence that the teachers can now be called as certified PF aiders.
our system attempt to improve the students' English proficiency have always been a part of the Philippine educational system. To make this happen, teachers are demanded to impart the five macro skills in English to their students. Listening, reading, speaking, writing, and viewing. However, students have difficulty in gaining competence, especially when it comes to reading. In a reiteration of Regional Order No. 1, Series 2018, the Regional Guidelines on Comprehensive Reading Policies, the Department of Education, Region 4, Ecalabar Zone, enjoins all concerned to strongly support Brigada Pagbasa to make every child a reader. Kalugkubuan National High School continuously supports the DepEd's aspiration to mold every child a reader. Yet, the predicament in reading continued. This could be gleaned on the students' perception and performance when they are tasked to read. This reality can be supported by a study conducted in CNHS for school year 2020-2021 where it revealed that students perceive reading as the hardest to learn macro skill. The problem aggravated after the series of tests through Philippine Informal Reading Inventory or PhilIRI. The post-reading for school year 2020-2021 revealed that 25 students from grade 7 to 10 were struggling readers. For school year 2021-2022, the number of struggling readers increased to 38 based on the pre-assessment. And so, the English teachers, including the researchers, conceptualize a project to develop a student's competence in reading. Project Heroes, honing effective readers through optimized enrichment strategies, was made and Project Heroes sought to answer the following questions. What are the appropriate intervention activities that suit the needs and learning of targeted students? What are the milestone of Project Heroes which help in intensifying learner skill in reading? How effective is the implementation of the project as reflected from the result of reading assessments? A qualitative descriptive research design was used since this research tried to understand and reveal the impact of Project Heroes to the targeted learners. These projects serve all of 772 students of Kalubkub 1.0 National High School during the school year 2021 to 2022. The status of learners in reading was categorized based on the reading assessment conducted by the English teachers in each grade level. What are the appropriate intervention activities that suit the needs and learning of targeted students? A. A tutor and an educator. B. Find anybody a reading body. C. No hesitation for home visitation. D. Creation of interventions. What are the milestones of Project Heroes which help in intensifying learners' skill in reading? Based on the documents and report provided by the CNHS English teachers, the following were the milestones of Project Heroes. 1. Identification of the students' reading levels and determining the total number of students who will become the beneficiaries of Project Heroes. 2. Conducting an orientation with the learners and their parents to address the necessary solutions with regard to the reading difficulty of the children, as well as building a strong relationship with the partners and volunteers who can help and assist them in facilitating reading at home. Third, planning and crafting of reading materials suited to the level of understanding of the students to be distributed to all the students. Fourth, How effective is the implementation of the project as reflected from the result of reading assessments of learners? As reflected by the data on the graph, it could be resolved that the interventions and activities done under Project Heroes gained positive result as the respondents improved their reading performance. After applying all the strategies and interventions made by the teachers, the goal was achieved. The number of independent readers increased while the number of non-readers decreased from 38 it goes down to 4, which entails an improvement of 
Great day everyone! I am Karina P. Carandang from Taisan National High School, San Jose, Batangas. It is my pleasure to present my research entitled IELMS, Development and Utilization of an Interactive Digital Module in Science on the Properties of Gas and Boyle's Law. Learners in the 21st century are more inclined toward using new technologies more efficiently. As we embrace digital media, teachers identify ways to enhance student engagement using technological tools. The importance of technology in education is growing and continuously realized. Integrating technology into education helps provide better teaching and learning experiences which result in better and higher learning outcomes. With technology, one can expect increased efficiency and effectiveness on both the part of the teachers and students by Waddle 2015. The urgency for the use of technology in education heightened at the time of the pandemic when the distance learning was the only alternative means to continue the education of learners. During the school year 2021-2022, Taisan National High School was in its second year of the implementation of printed MDL or printed modular distance learning that allowed learners to use printed self-learning modules or SLMs. During its implementation, several challenges and difficulties were experienced by everyone who are involved in the education process during the pandemic, including school administrators, teachers, parents, and students. To address this challenge, the research proponent developed the IELMS, an interactive electronic learning module in science. The following are the research objectives. Number one, what is the academic performance of grade 10 students during the school year 2021-2022 during the first, second, and third quarter? Number two, what is the level of acceptability of the developed module in terms of content, format and technical aspects, presentation and organization, and accuracy and up-to-dateness of information? Three, what is the impact of utilizing the IELMS on the learner's mastery level of the most essential learning competency in Science 10? And, based from the findings, what plan of action may be proposed to enhance the utilization of the IELMS in improving learners' academic performance? The pretest post test experimental method was employed in this study. The participants of this study are the grade 10 learners from the junior high school of Taisan National High School for school year 2021-2022, science teachers, and district learning resource evaluators. The set of respondents was purposely selected by the researcher. The following results were obtained in the study. Based on the results of the study, grade 10 learners have a satisfactory academic rating in science during the first, second, and third grading periods of the school year 2021-2022. The developed interactive e-learning module in science has a very satisfactory evaluation result in terms of content, format, and technical design, presentation and organization, and accuracy and up-to-dateness of information. As a result of using the interactive e-learning module in science, there was an increase in the mastery level of students in science lessons, and this reflects that the digital module has a positive impact and helps in improving the academic performance of learners. A plan of action may be proposed to improve the utilization of the interactive e-learning module in science, thus enhancing its effectiveness on improving the academic performance of learners. Teachers must continue to exert efforts on integrating technology in the pedagogical process which is aimed at developing the 21st century skills. Utilize strategies and techniques that address teachers' and learners' difficulties to achieve optimum teaching and learning outcomes. The use of the interactive e-learning module in science is highly recommended not only for science teachers but all learning areas. This does not only improve teachers' creativity and ICT skills, but increases students' interest, participation, ICT skills, and academic performance. To better test the effectiveness of the interactive e-learning module in science in enhancing the academic performance of students, 
and experimental research with controlled and uncontrolled groups may be conducted. This study may also be a basis for other researchers to identify other strengths and potentials of the digital modules and other learning resources in education. It is hopefully prospected that the study and the proposed plan of action will contribute to the development of the ICT skills of both teachers and learners and increase learners' motivation and academic performance. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Good day everyone, I am Chris Dibalde Asus from Bawan Technical Integrated High School, Division of Batangas Province. My research is about faculty development program based on PPST priority needs. Teachers play essential roles in structuring the future by enabling the most significant learning among the students. It is their duty to ensure that knowledge, understanding, and skills must be developed by all students to be at par with the swift changing environment and embody the idea of 21st century learning. Over the years, Department of Education make fundamental modifications of all the programs which is focusing on teachers' improvement to meet the requirement of the 21st century, which can commonly seen in the faculty development program in all institutions. This study aims to assess the faculty development program in all public senior high school in Bowen West District, specifically to determine the characteristic of the teachers and the school heads in public senior high school in Bowen West District in terms of the, their profile. Also to describe the faculty development program of public senior high school in Bowen West District in terms of the BPST priority needs starting from content knowledge and pedagogy to personal growth and professional development. The next one is to find the significant difference in the assessment of the competence of the two sets of respondents when grouped according to profile. Number four is to ascertain the issues and challenges in faculty development program. And the last one is to propose a competency-based faculty development uh, program. This research paradigm shows the complete research process in starting from the collection of the data using the questionnaire, documentary analysis, and of course, in order to, to treat the data, uh, we use the statistical tool, which is the SPSS 17.0, and uh, of course, the outcome is the competency-based faculty development program. This table shows the distribution of the respondents in terms of age, gender, educational attainment, and civil. This table also shows the distribution of the respondents in terms of length of service and position or designation. This table shows the summary of the assessment of the faculty development program, wherein it can be noticed that uh, the implementation of faculty development program based on PPSC priority needs is openly conducted with composite mean of 4.47. This table shows the difference response of the faculty or the assessment of the faculty development program when grouped according to profile. It can be noticed that in age, there is no significant difference between proficient and highly proficient. However, it can be noticed from the gender that in highly proficient teacher, there is a significant difference in professional engagement. Uh, in civil status, it shows that there is no significant difference in both proficient and highly proficient teachers. It can be noticed also from this table that there is a significant uh, difference in terms of professional engagement as assessed by the proficient teachers. And also, there is also a significant difference in content knowledge and pedagogy as assessed by the proficient teachers in terms of length of service. Other than that, the result shows no significant difference. This table revealed that the demanding issues in the faculty development program is the limited budget and resources for the development program, which is gained 2.77 weighted mean and was verbally interpreted as moderate. This diagram shows the process of the strategic priority needs or identifying the needs of the teachers and to be addressed through faculty development program starting from discover, create, lead, which is anchored on the order of the teacher's priority need based on PPST. Based on the findings of the study, the following conclusion were made. Most of the teachers in SHS Bowen West District are female and married with master's degree and serving the school for six to 10 years, and most of them are teacher too. The assessment of the respondents to the faculty development program as whether implemented based on the priority needs is open. Number three, educational attainment established significant difference in the content knowledge and pedagogy and community linkages and professional development similarly on language service based on the content knowledge and pedagogy. For highly proficient teachers, 
gender reveals significant difference on the content knowledge and pedagogy, curriculum and planning, and community linkages and professional development. The issues and challenges met by the respondents in the assessment of the faculty development program is in moderate extent. And number five, the proposed competency-based faculty development program can guide the school in supporting the teacher's continuous growth and development and eventually to provide better learning for the students. And these are the recommendations uh, based on the findings and conclusion of the study. Thank you very much and have a good day. Good day, everyone. We are Jay Escalera and Mena Dimacolangan from Padre Garcia Integrated National High School, Division of Batangas. And our study is entitled Maintaining a Positive Learning Environment Amid Pandemic, Benchmarking Best Practices of Teachers. With the steering transition from limited to full face-to-face -face classes implementation, learners have to be assured of a positive learning environment that provides them with ways to learn Practice and demonstrate their learning from DO number 35, S2016. As stated in DEPED Order number 35, Series of 2016, a positive learning environment is an essential element in attaining effective teaching. The very purpose of this study is to determine the perspective of students in viewing a positive learning environment and the best practices utilized by teachers in learning delivery in the limited face-to-face -face classes towards maintaining a positive learning environment. Best practices will be coordinated to LND coordinators for school learning action cell to aid teachers in promoting a positive learning environment, especially that the school gradually transition from limited to full F to F implementation. The researchers, after completing the study, drafted a proposal for school learning action cell with the same title, where target learners are class advisors and subject teachers for the current school year. Specifically, this study sought to answer the following questions. What is the perception of learners of a positive learning environment? What is the perception of learners of a negative learning environment? What are the best practices of teachers in maintaining a positive learning environment? The researchers use a descriptive survey method employing quantitative approach where they use self-made survey questionnaires. 50 select grade 10 learners of PGI NHS were selected purposively. The researchers ensured the anonymity of the respondents. Teachers' names were also identified through aliases. Table 1 shows the learner's perception of a positive learning environment. So with a mean of 3.72, learners strongly believe that a physical learning environment that is comfortable and conducive for all students is the best feature of a positive learning environment. In our learner's perception of a negative learning environment, Table 2 shows uh, that the learners strongly agree that a poorly organized and not conducive learning milieu is a manifestation of a negative learning. Let me show you some of the best practices of teachers in maintaining a positive learning environment, and this is based on the learner's perspective. Respondents appreciate teachers who possess happy and lively personality, young are energetic, cracks jokes, and always smiles. Likewise, appreciated are teachers who manifest a set of good traits, yung puro positive, hindi nang da-down, mahalang estudyante, at very understanding. 
Same with teachers who have the ability to manage the classroom very well. Stricta, but makes extra effort for her students. Next are the teachers who use various teaching strategies as shown in the pictures. By and large, teachers play a vital role in establishing a positive learning environment, making them the biggest factors in setting the learning milieu atmosphere. To conclude, results of this study showed that a comfortable and conducive learning milieu makes a positive learning environment, while an untidy and organized classroom precedes a negative learning environment. In keeping a positive learning environment, some of the best practices of teachers include possession of a happy and lively personality, set of good traits, ability to manage the classroom well, and the use of various teaching strategies. As researchers, we recommend that teachers shall at all times with or without the existence of pandemic ensure the provision and keeping of a positive learning environment as it gives impact to scholastic performance of learners. Best practices of teachers shall be subjected for sharing and adoption of other colleagues to ascertain that positive learning environment is ensured specifically during this time of pandemic. The proposed school action learning cell shall be implemented to present ideas and examples to teachers in building a positive learning environment. These are all the references and thank you.